essentially when you buy into an oil, a, a huge oil production company, how it works out is going to depend on the price of oil to a great extent. It, it's not going to be your geological home runs or super mistakes or anything like that. It, it is a investment that depends on the price of oil. And when oil goes to minus $37, <laughs> it happened the other day for, for, I guess it was the May contract. You know, that's off the chart. And if you own oil, you should only own oil if you expect these prices to go up significantly. I don't know whether they'll go up significantly or not, but it doesn't work at $20 a barrel. And everything the oil companies have been doing, whether it's Exxon or Occidental or anybody else, it doesn't work at these oil prices. That's why oil production is going to go down a lot in the next few years, because it does not pay to drill. Now, to that extent, if you're an Oxy shareholder, you'll join me in having made a mistake so far in terms of, of where oil prices went and who knows where they go in the future. Welcome back everyone to the Audacious Money Rich channel where we talk about investing and trading and a lot of fun things. Why Warren Buffett has been buying so much oxy stock, second wave inflation, do this now to profit from it. While most of the Wall Street bulls are thinking the Fed will cut rates this year sooner rather than later, the hotter than expected inflation numbers for months after months suggest otherwise. If you think the Fed will cut rates this year, think again. What's the point of them cutting rates? The action of rate cut is suggesting the economy is struggling and needs that stimulation. Do we really crave that zero interest rate stimulation so badly? 11 years of near zero interest rates from 2009 to 2022 drove record debt and consumption. With a manic over allocation to expensive real estate. Then online shopping and e-commerce work from home collapsed demand for commercial and office space, and central banks embarked on the most aggressive rate tightening cycle in more than 40 years. As central banks hold tight, the highly leveraged economy is starting to reap what has been sown by years of deleterious financial behaviors and business models. Of course, we are still in the election year. The Fed liquidity is still high, but when you look at the chart of S&P 500, it finally has broken that uptrend line. We know that this rally is led by AI and the only company is benefiting from the massive AI spending materially is NVIDIA. NVIDIA is set to kick off the AI conference on Monday, but this week they are down 7.5%. Well, if you are a swing trader, you are pretty much out at this point, taking your profit and waiting for the next opportunity to present itself. So this is the period in which effectively the stock went from 10 to 1,000. Um, and now let's put some lines in. We have a well-defined internal trend line. Literally, we have come up against this line for the fourth or fifth time. Just to sort of annotate that further, let's put some arrows in and you'll see that we are touching this line. Last week, we touched it to the penny, and that's where we got that massive back off, that outside reversal day. And so uh, the question is, is it a, a big move uh, to a difficult level? I think that's the case. Let's zero in, final chart, and this would be sort of the here and now chart. It's that textbook breakout. The stock made no progress, essentially trading at 500 for six months, and then the beginning of the year, it broke out from a well-defined formation and it doubled effectively going to 1,000. And I think you have price discovery here, whatever might be coming in the conference next week or whatever is. An opportunity is coming to us shortly, thanks to the second wave of inflation. How do I know that? Well, take a look at the heat map of the S&P 500 this week. You can see the energy sector is in the green. This explains why Buffett has been buying so much oxy stock Occidental Petroleum. He knows it's going up. I think he put energy in his portfolio for a reason. That reason is as a hedge for inflation going higher. 
why inflation is the ultimate problem for the people and the solution for the government is because of the massive 34 trillion debt and growing. If you have been following me since 2022, you know that oil and TLT long-term bond trades inversely to each other. If we are looking at the TLT chart today, it trades below the 200-day moving average again and trending lower now. Signaling inflation trade has come back again. Yes, the bond market is giving us a warning that inflation is not dead. While gold held steady at $2,160 per ounce, silver staged at 1.6% gain, reflecting in part the broader surge in industrial metals with copper nearing one year high. Oil remains stable at $80 per barrel, but it has climbed over 4% for the week, trading at its loftiest levels since early November 2023. I have to highlight the copper price going up higher, signaling the economy is doing okay right now. It certainly doesn't need any sort of a rate cut because the oil trade in 2022 has been so profitable and of course it's now essentially backed by Warren Buffett. It actually performs better than the oil itself, unlike gold. Gold has been rallying it up, but the gold stocks are a real lagger still. But I am waiting patiently for my gold stock to perform right now. We have an interesting technical setup in gold called a cup and handle pattern. It worked in my AMD stock, but now we are setting up a multiple years of cup and handle pattern in gold all the way back from 2011. As the gold price goes higher, it will make the gold stock I own more profitable by the day. We will have a gold stock bull market in the future as gold is currently in a bull market with a fresh new high made last Friday. One thing for gold is that you never have to worry about gold prices. However, gold prices going up is not a good thing. It ultimately means inflation. When you see stocks and bonds differentiate, people start to wonder who is right. In this case, based on the huge warning of that bearish engulfing candle happened on both Nvidia stock and S&P 500, and S&P 500 has broken its uptrend yet again. Nvidia is sitting right on that uptrend line. If next week Jensen says something like the market doesn't like, we might be going lower. Understand fibs. See this, this is a my golden pocket. And I even drew little things here for you, uh, also known as, as icons or emojis. We're here, uh, it goes, oh, this is like an Eiffel Tower, all the way down to the pocket right here. And then that'll probably give way and then that'll be your floor. So if you wanna start accumulating again, it's gonna be right there. You could probably uh, take a shot right there. But and VIX is now above its 200 day moving average heading higher. And the fact that the bond market is always run by the smart money, telling us that the stock market correction is coming certainly. We really could have a real shot of buying Nvidia stock at a discounted price in the coming weeks. I mean the bond market is so smart that it's mostly impossible for most people including the Fed to predict where interest rate is going. This is why it's a really bad idea to own TLT because clearly no one knows where it's going and you are only getting paid 4% to hold it and you might be losing that because it's going down right now. So this leads us back to gold. I think gold is much safer compared to the almighty US Treasury bond like TLT because central banks, which are main buyers of the gold over the last two years, they are not necessarily going to be placing Bitcoin as their reserve asset in their central bank. China is banning Bitcoin and buying up gold.
Uh, China's central bank put out data yesterday showing that they bought gold for a monthly for 16 months in a row. They're continuing to diversify reserves. That's not going to end, given where U.S.-China trade tensions are likely going. And then China consumer, they're not going to stimulate growth enough. The consumer can't make money in property, in stocks, in wealth management products, bank deposits. They're going into gold. And I think that's likely to continue, too. Central banks in 2022 bought 1,141 tons, $70 billion worth of gold. It was a record. Last year, they basically did about the same. It was, again, a record. This year, I'm sure they're on pace. Rebecca's right to bring up China. Central banks, and we've said this, they're hedging their own ineptitude, and I absolutely believe that. And gold's one of those things, and this is going to sound somewhat glib. It's not meant to be. It's not a story until it is, and it's becoming a story because we're leading tonight with it. As gold prices are signaling inflation, but inflation means oil prices going higher. This is why Buffett has been buying up so much Occidental petroleum stock. Do you know how much energy it needs to power NVIDIA's AI data centers? A whole lot of energy. Think about it. Those are supercomputers we are talking about. It requires a lot of energy. Berkshire Hathaway recently published its 2023 annual report and letter to shareholders. In it, Berkshire chairman Warren Buffett identified a few publicly traded stocks that he expects Berkshire to own. Indefinitely now, what makes these stocks so special, Buffett says these companies make him so comfortable because they are hugely successful in their base businesses, plus the products and services that these companies provide. Travel, meaning that they become worldwide brands and essentials of the world we live in. Looking at Oxy stock, Occidental Petroleum, a stock that Buffett calls his forever stock. It's not expensive, but it's not cheap either. Berkshire owns more than 28% of the Occidental Petroleum Oxy companies. Outstanding shares. Oxy is one of the world's largest independent oil and gas producers. Buffett thinks the company's leadership position in carbon and capture initiatives could bear fruit too. I don't think Oxy has been an economic moat due largely to the expensive acquisition of Anadar Petroleum in 2019. That purchase put a dent in Oxy's profitability. But management has been deleveraging the company's balance sheet and I think the balance sheet looks better than they have in several years. But it still has a lot of debt. $20 billion in debt and $1 billion in cash. That's a bit of a stretch in my opinion, even for Buffett. I expect Oxy's financial health to continue to improve if oil continues its momentum. I believe the stock is worth a fair value of $56 per share. One thing that prevents me from buying this Buffett's Forever Oxy stock Oil price might be going down because of the drill baby drill, of course. Oil prices and interest rates is not a good place to bet your money on. The only times to buy oil is when no one is buying oil in 2020. That presents a logical trade to build a meaningful dividend cash flow source. But other than those extreme situations, it's way harder than you think to predict oil prices. But with commodities, it's particularly dramatic. If there are bad debts and energy loans, you can imagine what happens to the equity holders. So yes, there's risk. They take a long time. They earn decent returns. I've always said about energy business, it's not, it's not a way to get real rich, but it's a way to stay real rich. We will deploy a lot, a lot of money at decent returns, not super returns. Lastly, we know the S&P 500 will most likely have a correction starting next week. There are two types of AI stocks. There are AI chip stocks like Nvidia, AMD. There are enterprise software companies that will benefit from AI, which are selling off on Friday like Adobe, Snowflakes, cybersecurity stocks like Palantir, Cloudflare. The reason why they were sold off is because it's mostly hype. There is no material AI money flowing in their recent earnings yet. Those are mostly hype, but the chips are real. 
Because the hyperscalers need to buy the chips first to train their AI, then work with enterprise software companies to analyze their data. So my money will go to chip stocks first when I see the opportunities present themselves. Started out, Jarvis was just a natural language UI. Now he runs the Iron Legion. He runs more of the business than anyone besides Pepper. Artificial intelligence. This could be it, Chris. Oh, 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 oh,